Well, hello, everybody. This is Dennis and Andy, and we are here with your movie review in a few. This week's movie was or is The Pope's Exorcist. I know. We're kind of looking forward to seeing this movie. It was, uh, you know, the previews have to be able to catch you, and it looked different enough. I am a fan of the Exorcist movies. Uh, I've enjoyed, you know, I like the genre in general, and uh, I was just hoping this one was going to live up to expectations, especially seeing Russell Crowe in a horror movie. Just not what I was expecting. No, not at all. And, you know, one of the other things not expecting. Okay, so one, the movie's an hour 43. It's pretty tight. Um, Spoiler free review here. But. Some of the soundtrack choices, this takes place in 1987. Some of the soundtrack choices, when you first hear it, you're like, that's odd for a movie like this. But then, you know, it makes sense. It's basically what, you know, it centers around a mom, her two kids. They basically inherit inherit this Abby in Spain from her deceased husband who passed away a year previously So you hear this 80s music, you're like, that seems odd. But then you realize it's through headphones. The kids are listening. So you're like, okay, makes more sense. Um, Russell Crowe, like Dennis said, in a horror movie, just, man, he's just, he's just phenomenal. Um, He actually, for a horror movie, added a bit, and this goes to the writing, of course. It's not like uh, he wrote this, but... The dialogue he has, a little bit of humor in some of the scenes, uh, which I thought was a nice nice play with everything else, with the dark moments and stuff, because there are dark moments in this movie. Yeah, the the movie is actually inspired by the actual uh, files and the books that Father Gabriel Amorth had written uh, in real life until his passing in, I think, 2016. He's yep. the chief exorcist of the Vatican. Um, and we follow Father Amorth as he investigates a young boy's terrifying possession as he ends up uncovering a centuries-old conspiracy that the Vatican has desperately uh, been trying to keep hidden. And um, he brings... Russell Crowe stole this movie, in, in my mind. He brings agevity, uh he he was funny he had a sense of humor and he uses that as a deflection in real life but there's reasons for everything when he needs to be serious he embraces the seriousness of the role when he needs to be funny he does he fills every moment and gives it a hundred percent and you could tell and across the board i enjoyed everybody that was in it the boy uh peter de souza uh, um, I think it's a Frehoni, Fehoni. Um, he is the boy that's possessed. He looked kind of creepy in the beginning, but he dude, he is scary. He is creepy as hell. Just in, just in, you know, the way he usually looks. Now I'm sure you know on a red carpet, you wouldn't think that, but in the movie, very creepy. And then later on, when he's full, full blown possessed, they do makeup stuff to his face and just just extremely extremely creepy the boy gets possessed and the whole deal is satan wants to um basically possess uh russell crowe's character because if he does that then he can basically you know obviously take control of of the priest's body and really wreak havoc and stuff so that that is what they really have to stop um, you know, it, it, it was, it was a pretty riveting story. Uh, I thought it moved along very nicely. It was a really tight cast because really it just focused on Russell Crowe, um, 
the the priest in Spain that calls Russell Crowe's character from father Italy Eric to come Crow. over. He did a nice job. He's a young father with no experience, not into exorcisms, and he had to pick stuff up along the way. I thought he did a job, a very good job, when he needed to be scared, he was scared. When things came out about his past, he realized it. He blew up with anger. I thought he did a nice job. But the other one that really took this uh, movie, um, Alex Iso, she plays Julia the mother, and I thought she did just a great job. I sat there and I'm like, I know I her from it. something. And it was killing me because it's one of those faces. And I'm like, I can't think of what it was. And then it was Dr. Sleep afterwards. I'm like, that's what it's from. You know, she played uh, Duvall's character, Wendy, um, in that one. So she was great. And then we get to meet uh, Franco Nero plays the Pope. In this case, they don't say which one, but it would be. And because it takes place in 1987, Pope John Paul II, um, he's fantastic uh, in everything. Django on, and Django Unchained, uh, Force Ten from Navarone. I mean, just just love that guy. He's he's great. So. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking because I I recognize obviously the main actress too. Now I didn't see Doctor Sleep, but I'm just looking to see some of her other credits, and uh, I don't think I've seen any of these. Uh, movies, but she was. She was fantastic. Uh, the, the woman that played that the played mother. Amy, the other daughter, she's the middle, she's the rebellious daughter. She does a oh, nice yeah. job for what she's in it. I wasn't too familiar with her. She's been in, she was in the Miss Marvel show, and I gave up on that show, so I, I didn't really know her from that. And uh, But she did a nice job. Actually, the bishops, the cardinals, they all played their, their, their bits in here, and I thought the acting was great. I have already heard a couple of people who had seen it going, oh, this movie's full of tropes, and, it, you know, there's nothing fresh. Well, I have a little bit of a different take on it because this is based off of the writings of him in right. real life. So, you know, Gabriel Amorth, you know, he wrote down what he experienced. So when you see the head turning, like in the, in, in the, in the preview and stuff like that, and you see going down on all fours and jumping up, yeah, those are kind of tropes, but those are all based on the writings and things like that, that they've seen. So I'm like, you know, you, you're not going to just take the writings and discard everything from them. And I don't have a point there. There is one really cool scene that was different that I've not seen in anything. He's got a cool medallion, which you saw in the trailer, and he's trying to get them to, you know, look and follow the eyes. Well, they do something really cool and unique in this. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's different. And it's cool. And it makes really good sense. All in all, it was a tight movie. Um, I really wish we got a, I would have liked a little more on the family's background and a little bit more tie in. And I think maybe they left a little bit on the cutting floor, but all in all, it was a thoroughly fun movie. Enjoy. It's not one where you're going to get jump scares. It's not one that's full of blood throughout the whole thing. Unlike some of the other movies we've reviewed recently. Um, but this one in a genre does a nice job in my mind of filling, of filling the story, filling your time and making it enjoyable. And the, the only, I think the one area or the only area we disagree is, you know, you mentioned last night too, about a little more backstory on the mom and the two kids, the family. And I just don't think it was necessary because it's not a story about them you know, they're in the movie, but it just so happens that the kid gets possessed because, you know, of some events that happen at the Abbey in Spain that they inherited that when they get there is under renovation, there's a construction crew and stuff. And it is almost tropey in a way where, oh, the two kids are uh, exploring the place because this place is huge. And then, you know, without spoilers, something happens and, you know, right then you're like, uh oh. I bet that kid's going to be possessed. Yeah, so, but they do mention in it, they do go back to his previous experience, um, what had right. happened, you know, years ago. But we needed to find out because this Abbey is key to the central point. How did this focal point 
get into the family? How did it go through it, especially when you find out its ties later on? None of that is explained. We need No, but I don't think it took away. I don't know. I just, we'll have to see what you guys think you if guys you see it and let us know. Down below after you see it and let us know your thoughts. Yeah, let us know definitely your thoughts in the comments because I, I just, I don't know, I, I disagree on that. But I will say there was one point during the movie where um, I was going to lean over to Dennis and and jokingly say, because the movie kind of has everything and it's R-rated. So I was going to lean over to him at one point during the movie and go, man, all this movie needs now is a nice booby shot and we got it all. And then lo and behold... There's a booby shot. There's a couple of them in the movie. And I was like, score! We got it all. So, guys, it has something for everybody. Well, not really the ladies, but it let's is, be real. It's rated R. And, I mean, and it is. The the reason to me it was rated R wasn't the blood or the little bit of nudity you got. It was the vile things that came out of Henry's, the boys. Oh, mom, yeah. Was, oh, totally. I mean, I was expecting them to water it down like they did in the exorcist stuff. Oh yeah, no, this is as deep and hardcore as you can get. Yeah. The demon is trying to evoke stuff and the stuff that comes out, you're just like, wow, I really enjoyed the fact that there was no filter on it. And you actually felt probably what that demon would say. So I'm giving it a thumbs up on, on authenticity on that. Oh yeah, definitely. If if you if you literally took it down to the PG thirteen one f bomb only, it would have been a PG thirteen movie. You know, if they took out every f bomb except for one, even with the brief nudity, the violence wasn't even anything to make it rated R. It definitely would have been PG thirteen. So what are you giving this bad boy for your CGC rating? Where we rate movies from 0.5 all the way up to ten point oh, just like CGC rates comic books. What's your CGC rating, Mr. Turner? I am giving it an 8.0. I thought it was incredibly wow. fun. I said the, the humor when it was on there was great. It was at the right moments to, to break tension. Russell Crowe was so outstanding. The rest of the cast was very solid. I, I enjoyed just about everything in it. I would recommend seeing it if you're not a fan of this genre. Uh, you might not like it as much, but I thought it brought something, while not brand new, unique. If you're looking for something completely different, this is not it. But I think you will enjoy it. I'm giving it an 8.0. I'm going 7.5. I did enjoy it. Um, I'm not a big fan of, well, for one, like The Exorcist, the, the first Exorcist. Haven't seen it all the way through. Just scared the crap out of me as a kid when I saw the few bits and pieces. Never want to go back and rewatch it. But I must say, after seeing this movie, I can't imagine uh, watching The Exorcist and being freaked out because this one, I, you know, I think uh, definitely topped it from, from the Boyer, visuals I've the seen. The original Exorcist gave what I consider in this genre the performance of a lifetime that we will it will never be duplicated and i think that's the problem it's the gold standard i don't think it'll ever be broke this movie does a nice job of doing it but it will never fill those standards um i'm gonna i pulled up rotten tomatoes and the critics did not like this they gave it a 50 percent um the Shocking. audience however does and gave it an 82 percent so there we go once again audience wins that's right. You know who else wins? Uh, you guys win when you back Core Drat the Reckoning by myself and Dennis. 76 pages of barbarian action. Guys, we're at 79,472 here. But if you're not following along, uh, we did run a campaign on Kickstarter for two months. And if you take that total, we're at 84,000 and change now. So we are cruising along to the next stretch goal, which is the Necronite playable character card, because this is not only a graphic novel you can read, Dennis is writing a game module, so you can actually play the role-playing game and get that good old feeling of D&D &D back in your life, except, uh, yeah, this is just cooler if you ask us. Um, 76 pages, Core Draft the Reckoning is Conan meets Game of Thrones, Plus, all the magical wonder of Dungeons and Dragons all takes place in the Shattered Reach. 
Kordrath's tribe is slaughtered by a legion of the undead. Why did they do this? Who set these savage undead rival tribe members upon Kordrath's tribe? Well, you're going to have to read the book and find out. Um, we've got five different covers to choose from. Bud Root did a beautiful cover. You can, of course, read the first eight pages here. Look at that. I am putting a ton of work into this stuff, into the battle scenes, to really get you into the action. Um, so much, so much good stuff. You can click on the link that says read eight pages or down below in the description and go to coredraft.com to read the first 11 pages of the book. There's a few pages, or there's one page, I should say, that is a little not safe for work. Um, this is a barbarian book after all, and you can see that on cordrath.com. Here are some of the covers that you can choose from. There is an oversized artist edition, which is a hardcover book that features all of my black and white art scanned in full color. Even though it's black and white, it's because it's scanned in full color at a high resolution. It's like looking at and holding their originals in your hand. So that is also offered for people that really love looking at artwork and soaking it in. And there you go. Uh, this is the game module. Eight and a half by 11. Mayhem in the Miramidora Mountains. What's it about, Dennis? It is a, basically a prequel so of the uh, comic book. So you're going to get story that expands in, uh, on, in the entire world. Um, some great and interesting things are happening up in the mountains and it's up to your party to try and figure out what's going on and figure out who are you guys going to choose to help oh yeah we've got our parody ad i love the ads of the marvel superheroes hawking the twinkies and stuff so we did one but not twinkies this is cordrath they're hawking ax me mead little uh little beer from that time period is what they're talking about. Of course, you've got the Cordrath main t-shirt featuring my artwork you can get. And of course, I got to say, as much as I like, uh, like my shirt, I got to say the Bud Root shirt featuring the art that Bud Root did for the variant cover of Lilaneth and all its color glory is another fantastic shirt. Uh, we highly recommend both beautiful shirts that you'll be proud to wear. And of course, uh, get yourself a beanie as well for when your head gets a little chilly at night. Um, guys, go check it out. The links are in the description below. Four playable character cards uh, featuring Kordrath, Adriana, Lilaneth, the Necronite when we hit 90,000, and uh, the Shattered Reach map is what everybody's going to be getting. So... Uh, Lots, lots of stuff for your buck, not just the book. Go check it out. You won't regret it. And uh, we'll be back next week. Until then, everybody, have a great day. Have a great weekend. And uh, hang them high. I don't know why I said that. I just wanted to. Bye-bye, everyone. Awesome.